Welcome to AWS Report. I'm Jeff Barr. Today I'm speaking with Ulf Schu, a solutions architect on the AWS team. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about CloudFormation and how you've used it in your work so far. Mm -hmm. Well, I find CloudFormation uh, an incredibly powerful solution that we have here available in the AWS service. And it's, it's uh, so incredible because it allows me to um, repeatedly, reliably reproduce setups and configurations, or we call them sometimes also stacks, if for customer scenarios that um, either a single customer wants to use, or in our cases, we often want to achieve that many customers use these kind of configurations. And, uh, and yeah, well, it's cloud formation that enables me to give these customers these kind of solutions very quickly. So I know you use this to put together some really interesting templates to build a, a complete SharePoint architecture. So let's talk a bit about that. Yeah. Yeah, early on, um, uh, at the beginning of the year, we looked, as, a, as a, a solutions architect team, we looked at what we currently provide for our customers to help them make the right decisions with regards to deploying architecture and, and uh, compute and storage instances on AWS. And we found that we give them a lot of guidance around architectural pieces, how an architecture looks like and what they can and should do. However, we lacked so far very much some very concrete guidance around how to actually do this and, and they, they really going into the details of how to do certain things. So you want to bridge the gap between recommendations and practice. Exactly, exactly. Making an architecture real and, and making it not only a reference architecture but also making it a reference implementation that people can go back to over and over again and find either as a whole a sample that, is, that applies to them or find bits and pieces, nuggets, Lego building blocks that you can reuse over and over again. Now, I don't know a ton about SharePoint, but uh, do you need actually like multi, do you need database servers, app servers, web servers, and so forth to get this up and running? Absolutely. So once you have deployed this infrastructure, you can actually then go in and the scripts that we provide in our reference implementation do that. You go in and you deploy database servers, and you have the flexibility in, in, in the way you name them, in the way you configure them. You can deploy one database server, or if you want to go complexer for high availability, deploy a second one in a different availability zone, make them have them mirror each other, deploy uh, in, the, in the concept of database mirroring, use a witness server for fa that to detect failover, you can do that. You can deploy application server roles. You can deploy multiple of those because SharePoint allows for grouping of these roles. And you deploy web front ends. And again, then you can do this by taking advantage of some of the services that we deploy uh, in AWS and that help you. So this should also open up SharePoint to new kinds of applications where it sounds like in the past there was so much work to get these up and going. You probably wouldn't think about using it for the duration of a, a company conference or a short term event or something because you had to put all these all this work into getting going. Now you're saying if you need a SharePoint site for the duration of a three day conference or a week conference or whatever, we, we pull up the template, we fill it in and away we go. And at the end yeah. we can back it all up and, and shut it down. Oh yeah, this this is absolutely feasible now and, and, and very easy to do because of the repeatability uh, and, and the predictability of the outcome. Sounds great. I really appreciate you taking the time to come by and speak to us today and uh, looking forward to hearing even more about this in the future. Great, thank you very much. Thanks so much. Thanks. My name is Jeff Barr and this has been the AWS Report.